this class. So, so far you've seen this normal DIST command that is used to find probability. So in this distribution, if I put a lower number and then an upper number, it'll find the probability we're between those two numbers. All right, if I leave one of the numbers off, it'll find the probability that we're above the lower number, or it'll find the probability that we are below the upper number. All right, but if we put two numbers in there, it'll find the probability we're between the two. Well, another feature that we can find that is very useful is the inverse normal. I'm going to uncheck this box. And what the inverse normal does is you tell it an area and you want to know what number has that area to the left of it, specifically to the left of it. So if you go down here to the uh, keypad, you can go to functions, scroll down to distributions, and there is inverse CDF. So I'm going to click on inverse CDF. You could also, oops, let me put it down here. No, it's supposed to be in that box. Sorry about that. You can also just type inverse CDF. When you're typing it out, um, it will not know what you're meaning until you've got it all typed out. So you have to type out the word inverse CDF, and as soon as you hit the F, it understands and all the letters come together. Open the parentheses, and then you need to either A, type in normal distribution, the mean, the standard deviation, or you can just, if you've already got it up here, control C, copy, control V, paste it in there. Now, that's one of the things that it takes in. Inverse CDF takes in a distribution. So this is the normal distribution, but it also wants to know what is the area that you're dealing with, area to the left of the number. So I'm going to put in a, a, an area. It has to be a decimal between 0 and 1. I'm going to put in an area. So let's do uh, 0 0.8. So this number has an area to the left of it of 80%. How could I check that? Well, I can click that box. This is the area to the left of the number. That means it's going to be the maximum. So if I type in that number, 1112.6243.18504, you can see the area to the left. It's showing me the area to the left is 80%. Okay, so that is the, uh, the number that has an area of 80% to the left of it. And then I can just type that number in there, right? and it gives me the approximation. The only reason it's off, it's not perfectly 80%, is just because this rounds. It only has so many decimal places, so it's rounding. So we're getting something a little bit bigger. But that's how you can find, inverse CDF is how you can find a number from the, the like on the horizontal axis, a number from the data set that has this mean and this deviation that would have the given area to the left of it. What if I have a number or a, a percentage that has um, an, a percentage to the right of the number? So this is the, the percent to the right of some number is 65%. Well, again, I could use inverse CDF, copy and paste the distribution in there, right, and comma. But if they give you area to the right, this has to take in area to the left. So what you would have to do in that case is subtract it from 1. All right, so notice I put a 1 minus 0.65 or 1 minus 0.65 is 0.35. You could do that in two steps. But what I want you to see is you can literally just do 1 minus whatever area they give you, and it will give you the number now that has that area to the left of it. All right, so if the area to the right is 0.65, well, then the area to the left is 0.35. And that is the number. And you can see that that's the number in the box right there. So that's what normal uh, inverse CDF, I should say, does. That's its job, is to take in an area to the left and, and a distribution and give you the number that has that area to the left. And finally, what if they give me the middle certain percent? So in this case, the middle 50%. So remember that the entire distribution has an area of 1. And so if this is the middle 50%, then that means these two white regions are also 50%. And because of the symmetry of the bell curve, this is half of the 50, this is half of the 50. So this is 25% to the left of this number. So there's our, our ticket to finding these two numbers. Inverse CDF, again, it has to have an area to the left. So like we said, that area is 25% to the left of this 
this number where the shading starts. So I'm going to put in that number. Right, that's the lower numbers value. So that's the where the 89.882, all that number's coming from. And then if this is 50% and this is 25, 25 plus 50 is 75 is to the right, or sorry, to the left of this number, or you can think of it, 25 is to the right of this number. Therefore, 75 is to the left. So that number has 75 to the left. So I could just go up and change that 25 to a 75. And there is my upper number. There's where that's coming from. So one last reminder, inverse CDF takes in a distribution, comma, an area to the left, and it spits out the number that has that area to the left.